Good morning, everyone. Today is day 17 in our Lenten Journey morning devotional based on the book by uh, Pete Gregg, God on Mute. And today's entitled Tough Life. Maybe you can identify with that this morning as you're waking up and um, moving into this new week. Uh, regardless of where you are or what you've been through or what you're going through, I just want you to hear this this morning as we begin this third week in our Lenten journey that God is with you. God is present with you in the midst of everything that you're going through. And so to, to begin this morning as we begin this time of prayer and devotion, let's just pause for a moment, center ourselves in these words from the psalmist, Psalm 18, 28, and 29. Let these words wash over you today. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into night. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. Let me read that one more time. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. I don't know where you are today, but in what you're feeling or what you're going through this morning. But you know, we live in a world that is oftentimes, we're all familiar with that phrase, first world problems, right? Maybe you're waking up this morning and you're experiencing internet problems, or maybe you have experienced internet problems in the past uh, few days. Dion and I have been experiencing that with our, with our TV here. And the odd thing is they just installed new lines, new like uh, supposedly uh, lines that would be uh, a lot faster. And so we've just recently had an upgrade, but we're still experiencing these problems where there will be a big delay. It's really a first world problem, isn't it? Or maybe we get frustrated when our iPhone doesn't work or, or when we have to wait too long in a line at the grocery store or whatever it is. Those are all known as first world problems. But perhaps we should accept what older people and poorer people and, and many of those with disabilities already know. Things are probably going to be very difficult today, very tough, and just as hard tomorrow. And maybe by adjusting our expectations, Pete Gregg writes, we can reduce the sense of disappointment, isolation, and unfairness riding on the back of unanswered prayer. With a business-as-usual approach to life's trials, the good times can become surprising and delightful. See, what he's saying is to, to change the narrative, to flip, to reframe it. And what about celebrating those good times? Those times when when that we all experience, those times when we're captured by, by just the amazing thing that, that God even woke us up today, that we got out of bed, that we're, that we're able to, to have, a, um, have transportation and be able to have enough food to eat and, and water to drink and all of those kind of things that we so oftentimes take for granted people to love and people who are on the journey with us. You see, it will be our blessings more than our sufferings that provoke us to ask God, why? 
Why are you blessing me? What, what did I ever do to deserve all of the things that so oftentimes I can take for granted? In John 16, 33, Jesus promises his disciples both trouble and peace. He says this, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. But in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, take heart. I have overcome the world. So let's ask ourselves, which do I find more surprising, life's trials or its blessings? If I had been born at a different time in history or in a different part of the world, how might I relate differently to the difficulties that I face. I give thanks this morning, give thanks to the Lord now for the common grace of the world's essential goodness and the particular signs of his kindness towards me today. And so as we move into this day, I would encourage you to yield by naming your greatest desire in my deepest dread before the Lord one last time. I join with Jesus in his ultimate prayer of surrender in Gethsemane when he said, Abba, Father, everything is, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. I ask for a miracle today, yet not my will, but yours be done. I relinquish control. Amen. May you have a blessed day and may you recognize and experience those small things in life, those things that are so easy to take for granted. And may you embrace the living and the love and the, the joy that there is in following Jesus. Have a great day and a great uh, week. And may God bless you. Thanks for watching.